Recording guitars is pretty straightforward, so I've broken this video into the four main areas that you need to think about. The first area is how exactly does a guitar produce sound? Where does the sound come from? Second part, where might you put a microphone on the guitar, depending on what kind of sound you want to get? The third part is mostly environmental stuff, so thinking about the room that you're in, tuning in the guitar, the clothes or jewellery that you might be wearing that might make a noise that gets back into the microphone. And the last section is technical considerations, so things like sample rates, peak levels that you're recording at. These are pictures of the way that a guitar vibrates when it makes sound. They're all very different because every instrument is unique, but what they all have in common is the fact that you can see the sound radiates off that front face plate of the guitar. That's where the sound comes from in a guitar. And now that you can see that, where are you gonna point the mic? Beware the sound hole, because the sound that comes out of the sound hole is very boomy and very bassy, like this. So you tend to get this sort of sound if you go too near the sound hole. So a good place to start is about a foot uh, 30 centimeters, 12 inches away from the guitar with the microphone pointed at about the 12th fret, somewhere where the neck meets the body of the guitar. It tends to give a fairly balanced sound. That doesn't mean it gives the sound that you want for your particular song. You might find that recording at the bottom of the guitar is the sound that you want. So experiment with the mic all over the guitar, all over the front, the face of the guitar. Part of the design of nearly all microphones is that the closer they get to a sound source, whether that's a drum or a guitar or a voice, anything, the closer a microphone gets, the more bass frequencies it hears. We call that the proximity effect, as in closer, and you can really use that to your advantage. So if you want a big, fat, thick sound, if it's a solo acoustic guitar piece, you want something big and present, probably. So you know you can get that just by moving the microphone closer to the guitar. And equally, if it's an acoustic guitar part that's playing with a, with a full band, you probably don't want a big, fat, thick, in-your-face sound. You want something just a layer, a background kind of pad, move the microphone further away and the tone will be thinner, but it will sound more natural. So decide where you want to put the mic on the guitar, which part of the guitar that you want to mic up, and then move move in and out, move all around, and you'll find that at certain, at certain positions it sounds great. Go for one of those. Tune the guitar before you start and tune it after every single take. Guitars go out of tune so quickly. Think about the clothes that you're wearing. If you're wearing something, if you're wearing a shirt, if you can hear that noise, you really don't want that in your recording. If you're wearing jewellery that makes a noise, take it off. Noise that you might have in your room. If you've got a computer in your room, the microphone is going to hear the whirring of the fan. If you can't get the computer out of the room, and I realise you probably can't, then have the back of the microphone pointing towards the computer because the microphone doesn't hear very well from the back and it will reject an awful lot of that sound. Think about the strings on your guitar. If they're really old, you might find that there's an imbalance in the strings. The strings that you use more will sound duller. And if you're using brand new strings, they have a very particular jangly sound. What we tend to advise people is to put new strings on two or three days before the session and play them in. So you, you, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You don't get dead old strings and you don't get that jangly new string sound. If you find that you need to tap your feet while you're recording, put something under your feet because again, the microphone will hear everything. And the last one is silence at the end of the take. Think about as the very last note decays, any noise that you make, whether it's breathing or you moving and creaking in your chair, any noise that you make will be picked up by the microphone. So be as silent as you, as you possibly can. If you cannot breathe while that last note decays, even better. I've covered all this stuff in other videos in much more depth. 
So if you really want to know, again, the links are in the description, please do watch those videos. But as, as, as a brief recap, you should be recording at a bit depth of 24 bit and a sample rate of 48,000 or 48K, however it's written. Here's a few different examples of how it's written. If you want to know more about why, again, please watch the video. But just for now, that's what you should be recording at. Your meter should look something like this. You want your loudest peaks to be hitting minus 12, minus 10. As long as you're recording at 24 bit, which you always should be, again, there's a link in the description to the video about that. That's where you need to be recording at. You don't need to come in really, really loud anymore. Record so that your levels are like this and you've got absolutely no chance of peaking. And lastly, record in mono. You've got one microphone, it's a mono signal. One microphone means one input, means mono. I hope that doesn't sound like a lot or too much. It is a fairly straightforward thing to do to record an acoustic guitar as long as you bear all those things in mind. And the more you do it and the more you watch these videos, the more it will just become second nature just and you'll think more about all that stuff. So good luck.